Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to export a cell array in MATLAB. By export, I mean that we hope to store the contents of that cell array in some other format than our .mat file extension. While the .mat file extension is great, it is possible that you might be sending your data to someone that does not already have MATLAB installed. In other words, we would like to be able to export then our data from a cell array into perhaps a text file and or a CSV file. In this video, we're going to take a look at two different ways to go about doing it. One is going to leverage a built-in feature in MATLAB, and then the other one is going to be more of a primitive, uh, more generic use of our F open and F close. And so to begin with, I uh, would encourage you to get a little bit of familiarity with your cell arrays. Uh, we're actually going to cheat a little bit in this video and that we can create one from scratch, or we can simply go back to the results of an earlier video and I encourage you to go ahead and take a look at this one or generate some sort of results array. I won't go through the details of what this particular results array hold because that's not particularly relevant. Instead, what we want to do is we want to focus on the process then of creating the cell array and then simply updating each of the individual cells in the cell array. And the other feature of this particular script is that it can grow the cell array sort of dynamically. In other words, it's based on the number of times that these nested loops run as opposed to creating the cell array all at once. And so we're just simply going to go ahead and run this. And then so that we have some results to work with, I'm actually going to use the save function in MATLAB. And if you have not yet used the save function in MATLAB, we'll pull up the help real quick so we get a refresher. The save function will allow for you to specify a file name as well as the variables that you wish to save. Now, the only thing to point out here is that with the save function, you actually have to specify the variable names in quotes as well as the file name. So in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to store my results as results.mat. And again, this is not completely essential. Um, the idea is that we just simply want to have something already to work from. In other words, maybe you've ran this particular IP address scanner and you don't wish to run it again, but rather you want to leverage the existing results and then export them into a different format. And so at this point, you'll notice then in our directory, we have an additional variable. We have our results.mat. And just to prove that I'm not tricking you, I'm going to clear my command window and I'm going to double click on that, which runs then the load command. And you should now see a 512 by four cell in your workspace. And again, it just simply has the contents of this particular cell array. Now, the idea is that instead of double clicking or running it from the command window, then what you would do is you would simply use this as the starting point for your export function. And so what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and load the results.mat. The only trick is that you have to have the full path to that results variable, or it has to be in a relative location or in the current folder. In other words, you basically just need to know where the .mat file is. Now, at this point, we are going to test this two different ways. The first way is going to be to use the write cell function in MATLAB. And again, I'm going to pull up the help. And you'll see that it is very convenient and that it will simply allow for you to specify a cell array and optionally a file name, uh, we're just gonna let it do all the work for us and that we're just simply going to let it specify or rather we're gonna specify the cell array and then we'll let it figure it out. In this case, what it's going to do is if we run write cell against our results with no file name specified, you will now get a results.txt, which is usable. Um, it looks pretty good. It's by default comma separated. It seems to have everything that we need in it, including our timestamp. But sometimes you may run into a problem where it gives you an error. In other words, you may sometimes need to have a little more control over the export functionality. And let me give you an example of this. Perhaps you have collected the data in your results cell array in such a way that you have nested cells. In other words, basically, you need to be able to go in and control 
how and what gets printed. So to be able to do that, we're going to replicate the results here with our right cell, but we're going to do it in a more primitive fashion. And the way we're going to do this is with a combination of F open, F print F, and F close. Now, if you've worked with other languages, you should probably recognize some of this functionality, particularly if you've worked with C. And the idea is that F open allows for you to open a file, F print F will allow for you to print a file, and then F close will ultimately close the file. And so the idea here is we're going to capture a file ID. Uh, you could sort of think of this as a handle to the file using F open. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to specify, we can use either strings or character vectors. I'm for this example, I'm going to stick with the character vectors. I'm going to call this one results dot CSV. And the idea then is we want to specify that we want to write to that file. The thing that we only that we want to check is we want to make sure that our file ID is not equal to negative one. In other words, if it's equal to negative one, then something went wrong. In other words, for whatever reason, we can't open the file. Now, at this point, what we want to do is we want to set up some sort of indexing that will allow for us to loop through all of the rows in our results. And if you go up here to the workspace, you'll see that we have 512 rows. And so what we can do is we could start off at one and we can continue to the size of whatever the results variable is and specifically the number of rows. You do not want to hard code this value. You want this to work with any array size. And then we simply close off our for loop. Again, the square brackets are technically optional. Um, I just use them to improve the readability of our code here. And at this point, then what we can do is we can use our F print F pointed, if you would, at that open file, leveraging the file ID. And then we simply have to specify the format spec that we wish to use. And we know that these are character vectors, so we use a percent %s. And again, our goal is to separate them by commas. So I have four columns, the first column being the IP address, the second column being the command, the third column being the CMD out, and the fourth column being the timestamp. Now, I do want to caution you if you actually do this in conjunction with the system command, the command out is going to be quite large. It's going to be poorly formatted or rather hard to format within a CSV file. So I would encourage you to probably leave out the CMD out. That's really for troubleshooting purposes. And if you think about it, the person you're sending the file to probably doesn't need to have the results of all of those command outs. In other words, they're probably just interested in the IP address, the status, and then the time at which you ran the report. And then lastly, then what you want to do is you want to specify the variables that go into these locations. Well, and the way we do this is we simply specify then our results, curly braces, and we will use the index or the row index that is specified in our for loop followed by the column index. And again, this depends on how you have structured your cell array. If you've nested it, you may have to use pairs of curly braces, or you may even have to use an additional index to reach into an individual cell. Now, because this is going to get a little long, I'm going to go ahead and move this to a second line. And you can see here for each of the percent S's, I'm simply going to duplicate my column. Of course, changing then the column index. So in other words, for the second column, for the third column, and then ultimately for the fourth column. Now, the only thing that we did not get correct, if you would, in our F print F is that we also need to specify the new line. If you don't specify the new line, it's just going to continue to write this out on one long line and your output is going to look like somewhat of a mess. And then of course, after your for loop is done running, you simply want to remember to F close your file ID. In other words, you want to close the file after you are finished writing to it. 
At this point, then we should have everything set up. Let's go ahead and highlight and run this. And if we don't have any mistakes, we should now have a second file, our results.csv. And if we drag and drop this into MATLAB, you will see that we have effectively done something very, very similar to what the right cell has done. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't immediately see any differences between the two. So that's great. That means that we know what we're doing, at least in this particular example. Now, why would you go about using the F open, the F print F and the F close? Again, it's because you might need a little more control over accessing the individual cells than what the right cell function can provide by default. So hopefully you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And thank you for watching.